you know, we've shared some of this before. I'm gonna just want to go into a deeper area, but I, I couldn't shake this. Because as you begin to see the news and all the things that's going on everywhere, it's like, man, there's an identity crisis big time. Literally an identity crisis. And, and in this, you know, people are relying on so many other things but Christ. I mean, and, and it's kind of like part-time Christ. Does everybody understand it? It's not full-time Christ. So they only rely on the Lord when things get really bad. But they don't rely on him when things are going good. <laughs> what happens is when things are going good, they become complacent, compromising. You know, we've always, I, everybody in this room has probably said, man, this can only last so long. You know what I'm saying? Every time something was going good, it would always falter something would happen you'd make some stupid mistake or something would happen in your life or family or whatever and again in in that area the holy spirit said there is such a identity crisis globally and the enemy is crushing my people and he said he's crushing my people with identity crisis they're losing their identity. They're compromising their identity. And they're losing step with him. Because they're not maintaining the true identity. There are areas where we want to reach the fullness of our identity. Amen? There are, in other words, we may reach certain parts of it. But there's a constant, and again, we've talked about the process and regeneration of everything and reaching the fullness of things. Well, there's an area of reaching the fullness of who you really are. And when you really reach your true identity, you'll find that, I'm going to say the word identities, but there's only one true identity, but we go through a process of expanding our identity of who we are in Christ. The more you know about him, the more you identify with him. Now, uh, in this, again, there is an identity crisis. And, and one of the things that's happening in the, the world, the demonic forces are crushing God's people in our identity. Your identity validates your citizenship. You know, um, <laughs> your citizenship does not validate your identity. Does everybody get it? So you have an ID. We have a temporary ID. And we have an eternal ID. Amen? In fact, there's a lot of things you can't do without an ID. Amen? There's certain things you can't purchase. There's certain things you can't access. And it's the same thing in the kingdom of God. So can you imagine if you showed up with an ID that was cut in half? Would they accept it? No. <laughs> I mean, they're trying to manipulate laws today, you know. But you still have to have an identity. You have to have an ID. In Matthew 22. Hallelujah. Matthew 22. We'll start at verse 1. Let's speak it together. And Jesus answered and spoke to them again by a parables and said the what? The kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who arranged the marriage for his son and sent out his servants to, to call those who were invited to the wedding and they were not willing to come. Again, he sent out other servants saying, tell those who are invited, see, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and fatted cattle are killed and all things are ready. Come to the wedding. But they made what? Light of it. And went their ways, one to his farm and another to his business. And the rest seized their servants, treated them spitefully, and killed them. But when the king heard about it, he was furious. And he sent out his armies, destroyed those murderers, and burned up their cities. Then he said to his servants, the wedding is ready, but those who were invited were not worthy. Therefore go into the highways 
and as many as you find, invite to the wedding. So those servants went out into the highways and gathered together all whom they found, both bad and good. And the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he saw a man there who did not have an ID with him or a wedding garment. That was his identity. Does everybody understand it? Of what? His citizenship. Oh, hallelujah. And he said to him, friend, how did you come into this place without an ID? Does everybody get this? Or a wedding garment. And he was speechless. Probably because he said, I snuck in. <laughs> then a king said to the servants, bind him hand and foot, take him away and cast him into outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. The garments, his garments were improper. And they did not represent the event. Their proper attire was understood with the invitation. Those that accepted the invitations of new life received a new ID. Hello. And that new ID was to identify and allowing them access to the king's chamber. All others were removed or refused. The world wants to alter our identity in Christ and steal our freedom. Con through constant bombardment and deception, lies and lust and chaoses, with fear in the media, music and movies and sports and fame and wealth and false hope. People are selling out their identities for the ways of the world. For the lust of the eye and lust of the flesh and pride of life. In a world of, the, of ID, access is granted. But there's got to be different IDs of qualification. In other words, you may have a different ID for a working place. But it's still your ID, isn't it? It's still you. Not everybody has that ID to enter this high security or whatever it is. So we must have... IDs, and these IDs are qualifications through work, through security, or even purchase of goods by age. Amen? <clears throat> the more we identify ourselves as dead to the old and alive to Christ, we change by reaching another part of our new identity. There's a process of always reaching our identity and always exchanging our old one. You know, people identify themselves with their abilities and talents. But that's not who you are. Amen? We, everyone say, I am, because he is. Amen. That's why he's called the great I am. Amen? But we're offsprings of the I am. So I can say I'm an I am because he is. But I'm not the I am. Amen. He's the I am. But I'm an I am. <laughs> but I am in Christ. Does everybody get it? You know, the scripture that tells us he is a new creation in Christ. That gives you a new identity. The problem was is in the beginning of the new creation, we don't know who the heck we fully really are. And in that process of that exchanging and in that process of trials and tribulations and in that process of exposing our oldness to exchange it for the newness, we are constantly reaching that fullness of the new identity. The, new, the more you become, I, more you identify yourself in Christ as a Christ, offspring of Christ, the more victory you'll have, the more faith you'll have, the more endurance you'll have the more discernment you'll have. You won't be manipulated or swayed. You won't fall into fear, not saying it's not there. You'll know things are there, but you won't grab hold of it. Why? Because you'll be imitating Christ and how he responded and didn't react. Does everybody get this? This is where God is bringing us to in this process. In 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Your new identity. Uh, 
We've shared before, what does the devil come to steal? Your identity. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy anything associated with your identity. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians 3, 12. Can we read this together, please? Therefore, since we have such hope, we use great boldness of speech, unlike Moses who put a veil over his face so that the children of Israel could not look steadily at the end of what was passing away. But their minds were blinded, for until this day the same veil remains unlifted in the reading of the Old Testament because the veil is taken away where? In Christ. Now, again, the veil is the blinders to the new identity. Think about this. How many individuals out there are, are blinded to who they truly are supposed to be? But even to this day when Moses has read, a veil lies on their heart. Verse 16. Nevertheless, when one turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is what? There is freedom or liberty. But we all with unveiled face beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory just as by the Spirit of the Lord. Again, the veil is the blinders to the new identity until acceptance of Christ as Lord and Savior allowing the process of reaching the new identities begins in Christ. And again, it's really one identity, but we call it identities because you're constantly grabbing hold to fulfill the fullness of your identity. In 1 John chapter 3, you know, think about this. What did Paul say? I became many people. I became many things so that I may what? Save many. Amen? But his identity never changed. Do you think it might take cooperation to reach this identity? Yes. You're not just going to sit home and watch TV and expect an identity to come. You'll get multiples of them. Then you'll become double-minded, dual personality. Why? What do you think dual personality is? It's multi-identity. Amen? People are diagnosed with dual diagnosis, multi-personalities. A multi-personality is multiple identities. Hello. I used to have all kinds of identities. Hallelujah. Thank God I got rid of them all. I only have one. Um, I identify myself in Him. I don't even identify myself in my heritage. My inheritance is from the future, not from the past. First John chapter 3, verse 1, please. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us, that we should be called children of God. Therefore, the world does not know us because it did not know Him. Beloved, now we are children of God and has not been yet revealed what we shall be, but we know that when He is revealed, we shall be what? Like Him. For we shall see Him as He is. Now that is so powerful. And again, it starts off as a child of God. The beginning of the process of reaching your new identity. You must become a child. That means there's a relationship. You have a father. You have an eternal family now. You've been taken in as a child. You've been adopted as a child. Amen? And in that, there's that process. Hallelujah. Is everybody Okay. Oh, glory. Your new identity. I love it. In your new true identity, you will have a higher level of revelation. And in this revelation, one of the things that begins to happen, as you begin to know who you truly are in Christ, these revelations will be, begin to uncover satanic strategies. That's where the Spirit says, the anointing teaches you all things and you know all things. 
you know, we can quote that scripture all day long, but if you're not, not maintaining that identity to reach in that level of identity of who you are in Christ, those things won't mean enough to you. The powers of darkness will attempt to steal, to kill, and destroy your identity in Christ. There is no identity without Christ, except worldly, worldly identity. Lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and pride of life identity. The words of Christ in the Bible I will assist our identity of who we are. And the presence of God will promote the true identity because we're exchanging something in his presence, our presence for his. Hello. Again, in your new true identity, you will have a higher level of revelation that uncovers satanic movement and strategies <laughs> I want to say that are against you. And you understand more of the dark house because it ain't a white house. Hello. It's dark. It's evil. It's wicked. One of the things that will begin to uncover, there'll be more uncovering of deception in the world. All of these things, we are going to, we are entering in a whole new arena where God is going to begin to release more to those who are truly seeking Him with a pure heart and pure hands and a pure conscience. Revelations of deeper understanding and deeper revelations to uncover with the gifts of the Spirit. You know, the gifts of the Spirit are essential for you as an individual. If everybody would just allow the gifts of the Spirit to manifest them as an in, the, in them as an individual, especially in tongues, in the interpretation of tongues, in the mysteries being released, a lot of those areas is the release of the mysteries of God to each and every one of us. And even the interpretation of the tongues is prophecy. So the Spirit will tell you things to come. But we become complacent and laziness in praying in tongues. Why? Because they begin to compromise their identity. Oh, hallelujah. Go to Ephesians 5, please. Ephesians 5 and verse 1. What does it say? Therefore, be what? Imitators of God as dear children. Walk in what? Love as Christ also has loved us and given himself for us as an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling aroma. Imitators of God in love, which is the identity. You know what? What is the identity of God? Love. God is what? Love. So the more that you fulfill and reach the, the, reach the fullness of your identity, you will love. Your love will be different. The lust will be offensive to you. The love will be purifying. It's purifying. Amen? Go to 1 Corinthians 13. Let's find out what love is. God is love. First Corinthians 13. Starting at verse 1. Is everybody there? Let's speak it please. Do I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I have become sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, 
but have not love, it profits me nothing. Love does what? Suffers long. Is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. It is not puffed up. Does not behave rudely. Does not seek its own. Is not provoked. Thinks no evil. Does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in truth. Bears all things. Believes all things. Hopes all things. Endures all things. Love never fails. But whether there are prophecies, they will fail. Whether there are tongues, they will cease. Whether there is knowledge, it will vanish away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect has come, then that which is in part will be done away. When I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know just as I am known. And now abide faith, hope, love, these three. But the greatest of these is what? Love. Love. Your identity in Christ is love. Amen? What is the identity of love? God. That's God. That's his identity, isn't it? You know, people will go around and say, man, I love you. But then they, they don't really love you. Because they're not walking in the love of God. There's a desire behind it or a lust behind that. Remember, that is, these are all the fruits of love right there. And we know that peace, joy, and righteousness in the Holy Spirit is God's love. Amen? This is emotion. Would you go to Col uh, Colossians 3, please? Too many people hold offense, bitterness. It's not God's love. You know why? When people fall into that, what happens is they compromise their identity. Again, this is the ploy of the enemy. And that's why the Holy Spirit is saying, my people are getting crushed. Their identities are being crushed. Colossians 3, verse 1, please. Let's speak it. If then you were raised with Christ... Seek those things which are above where Christ is, sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind, your thoughts, your desires on things above, not on the things of the earth. For you did what? You died. <clears throat> and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, who is our life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Therefore put to death your members which are on the earth, fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desire, and covetousness, which is what? Idolatry. Because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience, in which you yourselves once walked when you lived in them. Hello, again. <laughs> when we have accepted his death, we also have accepted his resurrection as a new creation, a new citizen, with a new identity. We set our focus on the things above. Pertaining to the kingdom of Christ and knowing that there is no life without Christ. None. Life after this will not exist without Christ. Amen? 1 Corinthians 1. First Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 26. Let's speak it. For you see your calling, brethren, that not many wise according to the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise, and God has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the things which are mighty. And the base things of the world and the things which are despised, God has chosen. And the things which are not to bring to nothing the things that are, 
that no flesh should glory in his presence. But of him you are in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. That it is written, he who glories, let him glory in the Lord. <laughs> Again, your identity is in Christ. That's who we are. And one of the things the enemy wants to do is compromise it. He wants to bring a place of complacency with it. He wants to exchange it. He wants to come and steal, kill, and destroy it. And he's doing a very good job. Because the Holy Spirit said, my people are getting crushed with their identity. They're selling out their identity for desire. Romans. Hallelujah. Chapter 6, please. Romans chapter 6. In verse 4. Let's speak it. Therefore we were buried with him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in a newness of life. How are you going to walk in a newness of life without a new, without a new identity? It's impossible. You can't go around saying you're a Christian if you don't identify yourself with Christ as living that way. For if we have been united together in the likeness of his death, certainly we also will be in the likeness of his what? Resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves of sin. For he who has died has been freed from the presence of evil, which is called sin, and its influence. Now, if we died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him, knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death that he died, he died to sin once for all, but the life that he lives, he lives to God. Likewise, you also reckon yourselves to be what? Dead, indeed to sin, but alive to God, in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Hallelujah. Sin is an identity of the old man. It's an idea of the old. Associated with the presence of evil. Amen. That's why the Bible says if you begin to build on the things that God delivered you from, it's an abomination. Why? Because you, what you have doing is exchanging your new identity for the old one again. Ephesians 5. Again, we must be in, in, a, in a constant process of not only reaching our, the fullness of our identity, but maintaining our identity. Because you can't reach more identity if you don't maintain what you have. Ephesians 5.17. Hallelujah. Would you speak it? Therefore, do not be what? Unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not be what? Drunk with wine in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another in the what? Fear of God. In other words, that submitting to, is the area of respect. You want, to, you want respect, you sow respect. If you don't sow respect, you ain't getting it. People wonder why they don't have respect in certain areas. Because you've been, you haven't sowed it. Hello. Again, if you don't maintain your identity, <laughs> there's something else that will happen. Identity is also associated with maturity. So, uh, as a person matures in their identity, they become more trustworthy. Why? Because they're going to be identified as Christ-like. Was Christ trustworthy? Of course he was. Does anybody get that? Faithful. Non-compromising. 
James 1. Verse 21. Again, if you don't maintain your new identity, you allow, you'll begin, you won't allow it uh, to mature. James 1.21. Let's speak it together. Therefore, lay aside all what? Filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls. But be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. For he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. But he who looks into the perfect liber law of liberty and continues in it, and is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this one will be blessed in what he does. If any among you thinks that he's religious and does not bridle his tongue, but deceives his own heart, this one's religion is useless. Pure and undefiled religion before God and the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their troubles, and to keep oneself unspotted from the world's identity. That's what's called idols. Idols promote a false identity. No compromise of identity, no new creation in him. When there's, I mean, when there's no compromise of identity, we have a new creation in him. Amen? Romans 8. Verse 28. Romans 8, verse 28. Let's speak it. You know, uh, before we go, uh, there, there's a lot of people that are, have lost their identity, compromised their identity. And they try to identify themselves by how much knowledge they have. Does everybody understand that? They may be able to quote scriptures, they may, but that's not. In other words, the Bible says something specifically. You'll know their identity by their fruits. Amen? You'll know their identity by their fruits. Not by what they speak. Not by what they work. Not by what? By their fruit. Of their what? Of their character. Amen? You'll know the desires of their hearts. That's a fruit. Whether that is truly identifying with Christ. Or is identifying with selfish ambitions. Amen? This is where many people have lost or compromised their identity. And they're not reaching for the fullness of their new identity. Romans 8, 28, let's speak it. And we know that all things work together for the good to those who love God. To those who are called according to his purpose. For whom he foreknew he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. You know, that ought to blow everybody's mind away. <laughs> He's wanting us to be conformed into his son. Now, it doesn't mean you have to go to the cross and hang there. He paid that price. He meant integrity and in character. That the world will see Christ through us. Amen? And everything that we do. All of our desires. Verse 30. Moreover whom he what? Predestined these he also called. Whom he called these he also justified. And whom he justified these he also glorified. That's us. In his. In him. In our new identity. What shall we say then? To the, if God is with us what? Who can be against us? For he who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us, how shall we not with him also freely give us all things? Does everybody see that? You know, God's not trying to withhold things from us. He releases things in his divine order and time. And as Christ-like individuals, we must understand that. That's why the word says, be anxious for nothing. 
But in what? Prayer and supplication. Because through prayer and supplication, you're refreshing your identity. Every time you get with the Lord, man, you refresh your identity. And you're reaching for more of the fulfillment of who you are. When we come and worship, there must be a desire. There's got to be something there that says, I want to be more like you. I want more of you and less of me. Amen? Not that you want to work more hours or you want more money. Amen? Or that you want more material. He says, seek you the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all things will be added. Let me tell you, he'll bring far above all you could ever ask or think. By staying in position. He wants us to be in the image as sons and daughters of Christ. Offsprings of his love with power and authority. That's who we are. 1 Corinthians 2. You will be challenged. <laughs> you will be attacked. You will be offended. You'll be disappointed. You'll be discouraged. But hallelujah. <laughs> you're gonna allow, you're gonna not allow those things to affect who you are. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Amen. Who he who is in me is greater than he is in the world. I'm more than a conqueror. I'm blessed every spiritual blessing seated in heavenly places in a joint heir of Christ. And if he be for me, who can be against me? I am because he is. <laughs> verse 6, please. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 6. However, we speak what? Wisdom among those who are what? Mature. Those are those who... Maintain their identity in Christ. Does everybody understand that? A mature individual will maintain their identity in Christ. They're reaching that place. Yet not wisdom of this age nor of the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing. But we speak what? Wisdom of God in a mystery. The hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages for our glory. Which none of the rulers of this age knew for had they known, they would have not crucified the Lord of glory. But it is written, I has not seen nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. But God has revealed them to us through his spirit. It's called revelation. For the spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of the man? which is in him. Even so, no one knows the things of God except for the Spirit of God. Oh, hallelujah. Mature. Those that the identity, they've maintained their identity in Christ. They know who they are. Romans 12. All things will work to the good. But you've got to maintain that identity and want to reach for the fullness of it. Romans 12, verses 1 and 2. Let's speak it, please. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your responsibility or reasonable service. That should be done every morning. Every morning. That's the first process of exchange. And do not be what? Conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your thoughts your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. 1 Corinthians 15. There's always a renewing, refreshing to bring remembrance. Every day we need to be refreshed, don't we? It's reconnected. 
1 Corinthians 15. In verse 50. 1 Corinthians 15, 50. Let's speak it, please. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible has put on incorruption, and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your sting? O Hades, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus. Therefore, my bro beloved brethren, be what? Steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. And I'll close in Psalm 15. You know, one of the things that will occur is as you are maintaining your new identity, you will be able to choke react. Does everybody get it? If you're truly in that area, why? Because you'll know who you are. And you won't want anything to interfere with that. You will choke react until respond comes. So that you'll be able to respond as Christ, not react as flesh. With those outbursts of wrath and all that other foolishness. Psalm 17. Let's speak it together. Verse 1. Did I say 15? No, 17. Hallelujah. I like 15 a lot, though, I got to tell you. It's one of my favorites. Verse 1, let's speak it. Hear a just cause, O Lord. Attend to my cry. Give ear to my prayer, which is not from deceitful lips. Let my vindication come from your presence. Let your eyes look on the things that are upright. You have tested my heart. You have visited me in the night. You have tried me and have found nothing. I have purposed that my mouth shall not transgress concerning the works of men. By the word of your lips, I have kept away from the paths of the destroyer. Uphold my steps in your paths, that my footsteps may not slip. I have called upon you, for you will hear me, O God. Incline your ear to me and hear my speech. Show your marvelous loving kindness by your right hand. O oh, you who save those who trust in you. From those who rise up against them. Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me under the shadow of your wings. From the wicked who oppress me. From my deadly enemies who surround me. They have closed up their fat hearts. With their mouths they speak proudly. They have now surrounded us in our steps. They have set their eyes crouching down to the earth. As the lion is eager to tear his prey, and a young lion lurking in the secret places. Arise, O Lord, confront them, cast him down. Deliver my life from the wicked with your sword. With your right hand from men, O Lord. From men of the world who have their portion in this life. And whose belly you fill with your hidden treasure. They are satisfied with children. And leave the rest of their possessions for their babes. As for me... I will see your face in righteousness. I shall be satisfied when I awake in your likeness. If you notice, he was shrugging everything else aside, letting everything go. Okay, this is the ways of the world, but I'm not a part of that anymore. I know I'm going to be in your likeness, and that's everything that matters to me. Again, we want to continue to maintain our identity, not compromise it, not allow it to be stolen, destroyed, or killed but that we can continue to reach our new identity to its fullness. Amen?
Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We ask that you seal the seeds that have been parted in us tonight so that they can grow and bear fruit for your glory. Protect us and guide our identity and constantly, Lord, remind us of who we are in you and who you are in us that we may live a life of refreshing, renewing, and witness to the world in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. <laughs>